Hello and welcome to this Swift programming video. My name is David Thorne. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking all about mutable and complex types in Swift. Now this is gonna be pertinent when you start looking to use uh, like types and uh, mutate them over different threads with possibly using grand central dispatch or tasks or async and await or anything like that. If you want to understand how to have thread safe code or thread safe types, First of all, you're going to have to really understand what mutable and complex types are in Swift. The first thing you have to understand is what they look like and what a mutable type is and what a complex type is and what the differences are and then how to then um, keep them safe for usage on different threads in the future. But that's another video. With that said, let's just look at this first example. As you can see here, we have a very simple class, a counter, and it has a property value of type integer. Now, we know that an integer is a struct, so it's always passed by value. It's always copied, always copied. So when we, we initialize this counter with this integer, it could have been created elsewhere, and it's passed by copy. So we have our own copy of it now with inside of our counter. And these are really important things to understand is it's passed by value, not reference, and we have our own copy of this integer. This integer could live elsewhere, right? And if we come here and we just say uh, counter, and we say counter, and we say value here, and we say value here is equal to 10, and if we change this to a var, and then we say print counter gets a value, and then we say counter, uh, or say uh, value plus equals uh, one, and then we print out value once again, you can see that we get 10 and 10 because we set the value to counter, uh, we set the value for the counter class in the beginning, and then we printed it out, we updated this value, and we got the same thing. So we are, we are on the same song sheet here that when we pass the value to the counter, it was passed by uh, copy anyway, all right? We're all on the agreement that when we pass an integer to this one class, it's passed by copy or passed by value, the same thing, all right? So when we call this method increment uh, on our class function, that is going to uh, mutate our class, all right, by updating this value itself. And obviously we, we own this one value, so we can, we can edit it how we want. And to be able to read that value, we then just say get value and we return the value here. Now to properly understand what really is actually going on here, right? We're first of all, we're first of all saying that we've got the initial value is then value. So we are reading this one value first of all, all right? And then we are going to um, increment that initial value. Let's just say initial uh, value plus, whoops, plus one, right? So now we've, imp we've incremented that. And then what's really happening is it's assigning the value with the new initial value. And obviously initial value could just say here and work perfectly fine just like this. But what I want to show you here is that first of all, we have to read this value here. And there's multiple operations here and we are we are calling a, the, the getter on this one value, all right? And once we get it, that's one operation. And then when we um, set it, that's another operation. So somewhere in between, we are outside of this one value. And this is going to be important for the future is that when you have this property, if you um, read it and update it, you have to think about how many transactions are actually happening here, all right? So rather than having value plus equals one, we are, we are going to say, uh, we're going to do it like this instead. So, um, we are understanding that there's multiple uh, transactions happening here, and it's going to be really pertinent for the future, all right? If you're not worrying about thread safe code or whatever, then value plus equals one is perfectly fine, all right? But because you are starting to think about mutable and complex types, this is something else that you need to have, uh, you need to be thinking about, all right? So we see our, our counter now, it's a, just a mutable, mutable type. And we can change this to a struct as well. And obviously this would need to uh, be uh, mutating. And this is exactly the same thing. The fact that it has properties that are mutable, it is a mutable type, 
all right? It's not complex type, it's just a mutable type. And how can we make this not a mutable type and to make it completely thread safe for the future? And that would just be a uh, private let var. And then you wouldn't be able to uh, mutate this. And this, this here is it, it, completely immutable. So you could pass it anywhere because there's no chance of it updating anyway, unless you create a, a new counter by initializing a new counter, you wouldn't be able to change it Anyway, so whilst editing the video, I, I thought, well, what if we wanted for this to be a let and we wanted it to be an uh, increment instead? Well, rather than, we, we can't mutate this one value here, but what we could do is we could say increment and it then returns a counter if this was a struct, all right? And here we would then say, um, then we we'll make a new uh, counter and then we would say then value is plus equal to one. And that would then give us the new uh, value. And we could do this with a class as well, it's no problem, because what you are doing is you are returning a new uh, counter in, instead. Now this would be better to have like complete immutability. You would then just return another counter as well. So this is a way that you could get round this if you wanted to have um, a, a completely immutable counter, but be able to, um, increment the value and then reassign. So you would then go like say, um, my uh, counter is then uh, counter and start with one. And then if you wanted to say my counter is equal to uh, my counter increment by one, you would then be uh, calling this increment method. It would take the initial value and it would reassign that one counter to my counter once again. And this is like, this is completely thread safe code because uh, it's completely thread safe code. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to add uh, this thing. So let's continue watching. That's not a mutable type. That's an immutable type. And you don't have any problems with uh, you, that. The immutable types are completely thread safe anyway. So you don't have to worry about them. So let's just change this back uh, to uh, a var here. And we'll change this back to classes because the classes where the bigger problems are, all right? So let's come down now to our other, uh, two other um, items that we've got here, all right? And let's just change this value wrapper to a class in the beginning. So as this class, this class here, value wrapper, it basically is the same as the count. It has this value property and we initialize it as well. It doesn't have any other functions. And then we have this wrapped value and that takes a value wrapper as a, uh, a parameter, right? It sets it, keeps it private. And rather than like the counter, we have the increment and get value methods and they update this value wrapper. Now, why is this different? Well, the value wrapper, this is a mutable type, okay? Because it has a, a, a property that can be changed. And obviously classes are passed by reference anyway. Let's just have a quick, um, a quick example of pass by a reference um, so we don't uh, get confused. If we just say let's and we say other other wrapper here and we can say value uh, wrapper there and we print out value wrapper um, and this here, right? And obviously we're gonna get zero, right? However, if we say other wrapper value uh, other wrapper dot value is plus equals one. You can see we get one because uh, value wrapper is a class and we just created another reference to that one um, value wrapper. We didn't copy anything. Just It's just the value wrapper and other wrapper are just referencing the same object the whole time. All right. So let's get rid of this. We're now clear about um, why what we're now clear about the class classes are passed by reference. OK, so. Now we have this value wrapper and let's create our wrapped value and we'll just say wrapped value and we'll pass it our value wrapper. And now we print the same thing and we'll say wrapped value gets value and obviously we got one in the beginning. And if we now increment just like we did before the value wrapper and you see we get one. So we didn't touch the wrapped value here. We we updated the value wrapper from outside. So this, this wrapped value didn't know about this update, okay? Because it happened outside because someone else had a reference to, to this, right? And if we now say other 
wrapper and say value wrapper and say other wrapper value plus equals two here you can see we go to three because we've we've even though we've made a reference to the value wrapper we're still mutating it so this wrapped value has lots of side effects right it thinks it's not changed but is a complex type because it cannot control the the mutability of this one value okay and even though it is uh, mutating this wrapper's this wrapper's rap, value right it can't control its mutability from outside for that reason it's a complex type and complex types are like this are not thread safe okay and i'm not going to get into thread safe here but i'm just telling you that this example is not thread safe you would come into lots and lots of data races if you wrote code like this and you wanted to access uh, this wrapped value or over multiple different threads because this value wrapper could be accessed on another thread and it would affect the other threads here so this is where you've start got to think about what's the difference between immutable on complex types now, as we spoke about an immutable type, and let's just say uh, name here, for example, and uh, value, let's do string. This here, this here is just say item and name and uh, David, and we just say uh, other equals item. We could do this all day long, right? And we could pass this around because this name and this value, they, they can't be changed. And even though we have two, uh, we have literally two copies of it, right? When we print this, you'll see we get name, value, David, name, value, David the whole time. So you can pass this around to your heart's content and you won't have any effects because every single time someone gets this name, it is first of all immutable. And second is that it's passed by value and by copy anyway, all right? Now, if we change this class uh, here, instead we would need uh, initializer. And now we run this, we can see that we get, um, let's just say, name, whoops, item value here and other value here. And we run this again, we see David and David, but if we change other value to, to uh, James, when we uh, run this, we need to change that to a var. And once again, we see the same problem, but we, when we keep this as a value, we can't change it anyway. So even though other and item are referencing the same thing, right? This cannot be changed anyway. So yes, it is a reference type, but it's an immutable reference type. And you can make as many copies or, or you can make as many references to it as possible, but it's thread safe because um, the, the value can never change anyway, all right? So with that said, I hope that you've got something out this one video. This is, um, it's a fundamental thing to understand what mutable and complex types are. Now, when we scroll forward to the likes of thread safe um, types, there's, there's some stuff in between this that you really have to think about. And it's the likes of if you can send one type to another thread and that it's thread safe. And if that type is thread safe, then it's sendable. All right. And you can send it between uh, two different threads and you can mutate it. And everyone is completely synchronized. Everyone is happy and no one is having any data races uh, about it. With that said, um, in the next uh, videos, I'm going to talk about how we can uh, stop data races uh, and so on. This counter, sorry, uh, this value wrapper and wrapped value um, as a complex type would create data races, uh, uh, no problem whatsoever. All right. So if you wanted a data race, that's definitely going to happen. With that said, I uh, hope you got something out of this one video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and do all of the other social media things that you can uh, do to it. If you have any questions, feedback, or concerns, um, like always, let's start a conversation in the comment section down below. Why do you need to learn this uh, about this? Well, if you're watching all the way to the end, here's my golden nugget now, is that if you are going to be looking at um, the likes of core data or swift data um, where you need to really concentrate on having thread safe uh, uh, types right and it, you 
if you want to start looking at the likes of actors and so on, then you really need to fundamentally understand what mutable and complex types are first of all. And if you want to understand about how to synchronize stuff, um, now actors are a really good thing to use, but prior to using actors, you really need to understand about the problem with data races and how to stop it with the likes of, of semaphores or with synchronization uh, and so on. But I'm going to make other videos about this. So this is, in my opinion, step number one. Okay, well, step number one was learning about structs, learning about passing by value, passing by reference, and what the um, uh, 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 differences are between classes and structs, and so on, when to use them, when not to use them. But we've talked about that in 60, 70 videos throughout all of my Swift programming vi uh, videos on the playlist. So this is more taking now a deeper, low-level dive into Grand Central Dispatch, all right? Because Grand Central Dispatch is a more lower level, uh, more lower level thing, and actors and and so on, they're they're kind of sitting on top of this, and tasks are sitting on top of this. So I, I just feel that it's important for us to talk about this first to be able to move on to other things. Um, with that said, thank you very much for watching. My name is David Thorne, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.